please pause the video and try the question before moving on. What we'll do to get started is to draw a cylindrical can that does not have a top. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is to come up with the constraint equation. In this question, we are constrained by the volume. We are told that the volume has to be fixed at a value of V centimeters cubed. Of course, that's not a number, so that might be a little bit tricky, but basically you can imagine it to be any number that you wish. And in this case, we're just gonna leave it as V, as a generic number. So what we'll need is the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Let's add a few more details to our drawing. We have the height of the cylinder marked as well as the radius, and it turns out that the formula for the volume of a cylinder is the following. We simply have volume equaling pi multiplied by the radius squared times the height. So there we have it, our constraint equation. We don't have any values that we can actually plug into this formula, so we'll just leave it as is for now. The next thing to turn to is the question itself. The question is asking us to minimize the cost of the metal to make the can. Well, here's a key idea. In order to minimize the cost of this can, what we really need to do is to minimize the surface area or the amount of material that's used to make the can. And we can see from the picture that the surface area will be coming from two different locations. We have the bottom portion of the can, which is a cylinder shape, and then we have the side wall of the can, which actually turns out to be a rectangle. If you can imagine cutting the can down the middle and then sort of unfolding it, you would have a rectangular shape. More on that in just a moment. The top of the can is left open, so there is no area to be considered there. So again, we only have the bottom portion, which is a circle, and then the side portion, which turns out to be a rectangle. Let's begin to set up the formula for the surface area of this can. Now what we've done here is we've kind of color-coded the two sections that comprise the area of the can. We have the blue circle, whose area is pi r squared, and then we have the orange rectangular section, whose area turns out to be 2 pi r h. That may be confusing where that comes from. Frankly, it's probably best just to memorize that for a can, the side of the can is going to have an area of 2 pi r h. That will always be true for a cylinder. So now that we have this equation, our next goal is to make a substitution. And the reason we have to do this is because you'll notice that the formula contains two variables. We have the radius r, and then we have the height h. And that's sort of problematic. We generally want to express our equation in terms of just one variable. And that's where the constraint comes in. What we can do with the constraint is solve that constraint for h and then substitute it in for h of our surface area equation. So why don't we divide both sides of this equation by pi r squared. And then we can substitute v over pi r squared in for h into our surface area equation. Next, we can cancel an r because we have one here in the numerator and then a pair in the denominator. So the numerator can cancel and one of the two can cancel from the denominator. So let's rewrite the equation. And then we'll also notice a pi in the numerator and denominator, so those can cancel. So at this point, we have the surface area equation in terms of one variable. Note that v is not a variable. It is fixed at some particular value. So the only variable here would be the radius in this equation. So the next step in optimizing the surface area is to calculate the derivative of this equation. And before doing that, it's gonna be helpful to move this r from the denominator up here to the numerator. Just remember that when we do that, the positive one exponent will change to a negative one exponent. So let's make that adjustment. And now we can go ahead and take the derivative. So the derivative of the left side will just become s prime. We'll use a power rule to calculate the derivative of pi r squared. We'll move the power in front to make two pi r. And then this r will be to the first power since we subtract one from the exponent. Same thing here, we'll move this power down in front, multiply it by the two, so we have minus two vr, and then subtract one here gives us the exponent of negative two. Next, we set the derivative equal to zero and we try to solve for our variable, which in this case is r. Let's clean up the workspace a bit first. We could add two vr to the negative two to the other side of the equation. We can divide both sides by two so that the twos cancel. We could then multiply both sides by r to the positive two. And the reason that's nice is because r to the negative two times r to the positive two will cancel. The r to the two times the r to the one will make r to the three. We could then divide both sides by pi. And then finally take the cube root. Here we have what we call a critical value for the radius. We have not yet shown that this value of the radius actually minimizes the surface area of the can. We can use either the first or second derivative test to confirm that this value of r 
does indeed minimize the surface area of the can. So I think in this case, the easiest thing to do is the second derivative test. Recall that the first derivative was right here. So what we'll do is we'll calculate the second derivative and use it to confirm whether this radius value actually indeed minimizes the surface area of the can. So the second derivative, we can just use the general constant rule here. The derivative of two pi r will just become two pi. Again, a power rule gives us plus four vr and then to the negative three. Now the key thing to recognize here is that no matter what value we plug in for the radius, the second derivative will be some positive result. You can try that just to prove it to yourself by plugging any number you wish in for r and you should get a positive overall result for the second derivative. Now when the second derivative is positive, that means that the function, in this case the surface area function, is a concave upward looking function. So that kind of shows us, because it's concave upward, that at our critical value here, at this critical number for the radius, our surface area will indeed be minimized. So by the second derivative test we can safely conclude that this value of the radius does indeed minimize the surface area. The only thing that's left to do is to calculate the height of the can. But we, we recall that the height was equal to v over pi r squared. Now we can substitute the value for the radius that we determined into this equation. And we can see if we look carefully that we have the cube root of a quantity squared. We recall that when we have the cube root of a quantity squared, that's the same thing as writing it as the quantity raised to the two thirds. So let's revise the way that we've written this. Now this expression is equivalent to raising v to the two thirds as well as pi to the two thirds, so we can rewrite it one more time. Now remembering that this pi is raised to the first power and that we have one in a numerator and another in the denominator, when we divide these pi's, we're gonna subtract their exponents. So one minus two thirds is one third. So we can actually write this as pi to the one third. And then the same story holds for the v. This is v to the first power. We have v to the two thirds in the denominator. When we divide these, the powers are subtracted. So one minus two thirds will give us one third. Notice now that both v and pi are raised to the one third. So that would be equivalent to saying v over pi all of which would be raised to the one-third. And finally, it might be useful to note that we can rewrite this because any quantity raised to the one-third is the same thing as taking the cube root of that quantity. So the height of the can ends up being the exact same value as the radius. So the fact that the radius and the height are equal is a rather interesting result.